Hi guys, it's Sandy and I have a Bible flip through for you, but I also wanted to share a little bit of my crazy puppies outside doing some running. They are scofflaws. They jump over the fence where they're not supposed to, but they had a blast running on the ice. Although Vienna wouldn't run on the ice, she kept insisting on running around, but Giella was all over the ice, all over the place. It didn't seem to have much in the cracking around it, except for at a few edges, you could hear a little crackle sound. But for the most part, he just kept running right across the ice, like, come on, Vienna, come and play. And she was having none of it. So eventually they did run around the little bridge in back there to get away from the water and then jump back over the fence to come and join me for our walk. Yeah, that's my crazy dogs, my scofflaws leaping the fence. And we had a lot of fun in the snow, but you are here for the Lenten Bible journaling challenge. And I wanted to share this week's pages with you. So this is the first one that I did last this past week. And it's from Genesis uh, 49. And it's about Jacob. And it talks about Jacob and the lion, the lion's cub and everything. But in the devotional in the, the book that we're using, it talked about the slain lion of Judah and the enthroned lamb of God. And that really inspired me to have the two of them together, even though they're not in the verse. And it is what it is, because that's the way I roll. <laughs> so the Tuesday passage was from Passover. And what I ended up doing was creating the, the doorway and the people on the inside cooking their food. And the devotion talked about trust and trust being something that these people had to experience because God tells you to put blood on the door to eat this food in specific ways that he says to eat the food and be dressed while you do and all these crazy regulations and they just trusted him he told them to do crazy things and they trusted them and they did it and he saved them and i need to have that kind of trust in my life so that is what i got out of that passage next up we had first samuel and this one i couldn't get any visuals for that does happen on occasion stuff just doesn't come to my mind but what i did decide to do was take the message version of this this particular verse and write it out in some fun text. Because I don't do that very often, but I thought it would be fun to play with. The All the, the verses in there just talk about God writing wrong things and making things correct that were not, and that sort of thing. So he, he kills, he brings to life, he brings things down to, to death, and he raises them up. There's just lots of things that God makes right, including me. So I always try to include me in there so I learn my own lesson as well. This verse was a challenge for me. I, I struggled with it a little bit, but I ended up in a different place than what I think the scripture was taking me to. But it was talking about how people were not doing what God wanted and he punished them for it. And, and that's what he does. But where I ended up at is that God in his righteousness brings an end to injustice with consequences to the offending parties. But for us, Jesus is the one who erases our guilt. He pleads our case in heaven, and that I thought was really important for me to remember the day that I was doing this one. And then we had 2 Samuel, where the king was trying to make a house to honor God, and God basically said, tough luck on that. I have a plan that I'm going to bring my kingdom through your line. So God's plans are bigger than mine. He's, they're bigger than all of ours. So no matter how much we want to honor him, he just does what he's going to do because he's God. The final one for this week was Psalm 110 and Jesus as priest and king. And I took a silhouette of a Melchizedek type of figure to illustrate this one. Just did a, a silhouette with the scepter in his hand and used the words priest and king on there. Jesus offered himself as a perfect sacrifice for our sin and continually intercedes for us. Now, if you'd like to join in on the Bible journaling challenge for this Lent, please do so over on the Facebook group. There's a link in the description down below. We would love to have you share what you're creating. There's people of all skill levels there, and it's been really a, a super encouragement to hear what everybody's getting from the same verses each day. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again next week with another flip through of the coming week's verses. God bless you.